document. So keep up with your prospecting efforts and how often you're following up and how you did you follow up via email last time and let's call next time or let's send lumpy mail, you know, let's mix it up, but just following up and tracking your efforts. It's, it'll, it'll change the world. Double your sales. <laughs> Hey there, and welcome to a brand new episode of Delivering Marketing Joy. I'm your host, Kirby Hossman. Joining me today, a brand new rock star. Super excited to dive in. We've had a chance to talk one other time before this, but now we're going to dive a little deeper. She's a sales strategy consultant, a fractional VP, Nicole McNamee from Nicole McNamee Consulting. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. Absolutely. So cool. So I want to kind of dive in. I like, I like it when we I, I get to kind of jump at 10,000 feet. We get to learn a little bit more about you together here. So let's talk about a project that you have that you're working on right now that you're super fired up about and why. So as Kirby mentioned, I'm a um, sales coach, fractional VP. And so um, today uh, what I've been working on is um, one of my clients, um, we rolled out an order aggregation form. So they were using a lot of um, you know, pop-up store technology that was really draining the company resources. The size of the orders on there were not um, you know, generating a lot of revenue mm. and manually putting in those orders was uh, tiresome and just um, time consuming for the whole team. Right. So we put, you know, just an easy jock form together and tested it out and tested it with clients, just kind of changing the script a little bit. And um, today we rolled it out to a team of 25 people. And, you know, of course, change is hard. There's a little <laughs> bit of pushback, a lot of questions, but overall, uh, we also had some success stories to share and it's exciting to, um, I know it's going to work and it's fun yeah. to be a part of it. That's cool. That's cool. So, so that's kind of what you do, right? You work with uh, sales folks to try or, or, or sales organizations to help them refine what they're doing and, and make and increase sales, right? Yep. Uh, in the promo space. So distributors yeah. only yep. and suppliers. That's cool. Okay, cool. All right. So what, with that in mind, when you're, you're working with folks all the time, you're recommending them do things to improve. So what's, what's something you recommend people start doing today to make their life and maybe their business better? Ask for referrals. Mm. Um, you know, it's an age old thing, but, <laughs> um, you know, a lot of people don't do it. They're scared. Um, you know, we're in sales. We're used to hearing no all the time, but for some reason, salespeople don't ask for referrals. So I, um, I like to say to ask for one a week mm. and, um, you can do it. There's a, um, a subtle way you can change your signature and just, okay. you know, on Fridays, you have your signature that says, don't forget, I love working with people like you and um, like, please think of me for referrals. And, um, or you could also, um, you know, clients, I, I don't know about you, Kirby, but I hang out with a lot of marketing and PR and mm -hmm. other sales people in my life, right? Yeah. And so the accountant friends I have, they hang out with a lot of accountants. <laughs> so your clients that are in HR, they're marketing buyers, they probably know marketing buyers at other organizations that they're friends with. Right. So I like to tell people just th those clients that you love, go to them and say, I love working with you. I would like to work with other people like you. Can you please refer me to your friends, your network within the company, the industry, or just your social circles so Yeah, once a week? Yeah. I like the idea of the once a week thing. Cause I'll be the first to say, like, I, I go uh, with referrals and fits and starts, right? Like I'll be like, oh yes, that's right. I'm going to do this and I do it for a quick minute. And then I get out of the habit. Do you think it's because I, I agree with you. I think it is fear. Do you think it's fear or is it also just, heck, I keep, I forget to do it or is it both? Probably both. Um, you know, one salesperson I was working with, um, said that they felt like they were kind of slimy asking. Mm. It was like a low level thing to do. Um, and I don't, you just got to get past that. And, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, you're, as you go to the bank with that new referral. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Suck right. it up, buttercup. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I totally get you. Yeah, I it, it is a, that's a great thing and I think you know we hear advice like that sometimes Nicole and you think, "Oh, yeah, 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 I know that." But I always say the greatest distance in the world is the distance between I know and I do. Like I know to ask for referrals, but I'm not doing it consistently and I think that that can sometimes mean it's the most powerful thing to do. So I, that's great advice. Um so what are mistakes that you see salespeople making when you work with them and how can they fix them? Of course, you probably talked about this many times on the show, but uh, follow up, follow up. Um, Salespeople don't follow up enough. You know, it's um, we like that instant gratification of uh, getting that order. And if you don't hear from someone in three months, you just stop following up. And I, um, especially the bigger fish, in my experience as a distributor salesperson, some of them um, took three years. So um, you've got to keep at it. And um, the way that I, you know, you have to set a reminder in your calendar. You could do this for referrals too, but prospecting. um, I also, you know, document. So keep up with your prospecting efforts and how often you're following up and how you did you follow up via email last time? And let's call next time or let's send lumpy mail, you know, let's mix it up. But just following up and tracking your efforts, it's, it'll It'll change the world. Double your sales. <laughs> I actually agree. I agree a hundred percent. I think, you know, I think so many times as salespeople, we get hung up on our own timeline and our timeline really doesn't matter. <laughs> their timeline is totally different. And so, you know, maybe their budget got changed. Maybe they're still excited about this, but they got 10 other projects. Like I was actually thinking about a client today, Nicole, and I was like, gosh, I haven't heard from them. And then I realized they have this ginormous event tomorrow, which shame on me for not like, being on top of just knowing that, but I was like, well, you know, maybe I can give them some grace that they're not answering emails quite as fast as I want them to. So yeah, I think continuing to follow up is just great advice. So that's good stuff. All right, cool. So final question for you. And I always, I always like digging into this one. This I'm curious to hear your, your take. What, what is a piece of advice you hear all the time that you think is actually wrong? I'm not sure if it's actually an advice, but maybe a common misconception. Um, A lot of these events that I go to, or I'll go um, participate in sales meetings at a distributor, and you'll see these salespeople that are working really hard. And they, I don't know if they mean for everybody to know, but they're the ones that are always on the phone. They're panicking because something, Mm -hmm. uh, the ball was dropped somewhere. Like everybody's got people in their company that act this way and they, work until they're responding to your email at three in the morning. They're um, just, you know, maybe they're multi-million dollar producers, but they work around the clock. And I think the common misconception is that you need to work around the clock in order to have those multi-million dollar sales figures. And you don't. Um, It's working smarter. There's, you know, looking at your data, your client mix, delegating more to your team. You know, the, the truly successful people in the sales meetings and the groups in our industry are the ones that can go to the PPAI show or ASI show and hang out and learn and enjoy and connect with people like you. And because their team is, they've built a rock star team and they are managing things back at the home office. Yeah. And you're working with vendors that you can trust and that, you know, if something, the ball drops, you text them and they're on it. And so just building that environment for yourself, it's just, you'll, you know, grow your sales yeah. in the long run. You can do that. And, and your family will love seeing you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, you know, I think it is. It's it's so, don't get me wrong. I know that there are times where a, a specific order goes sideways. Um, mm-hmm. And I think your point is it shouldn't be every week, um, you know, building that, that process. When you build the process, you build the team. That's when you actually build a business. You know, I think uh, I've been spending a lot of time thinking about this lately, Nicole. And, I, you know, when you create a business that is 100% uh, kind of tied to you being a part of it, you haven't created a business. You've created a job and you have the worst damn boss on the planet, right? <laughs> and so I think your your take on that is spot on. That's that's good stuff, Nicole. So so let me ask you, where can people find more information about you? Um, thanks so much for asking. Uh, yeah. NicoleMcNamee.com, uh, N-I-C-O-L-E-M-C-N-A-M-E-E.com. And there's, um, you can book appointments for introductions on my calendar app through there. That's cool. Well, Nicole, I really appreciate you taking the time. This has been fun. We'll do it again sometime, okay? Awesome. Thanks for having me. No problem. Well, that's going to wrap up this edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. We'll see you next time.